Welcome to a special edition of Access Carolina. I'm Margaret Burnquist. Today we're celebrating some of the amazing animals we've had the chance to meet here on the show. From the furry to the feathery and even the armored, we are looking back on some of those animal encounters, starting with the Greenville Zoo's newest education ambassador. This is Coco, the three-banded armadillo here um, along with Maxine Van Dam from the Greenville Zoo. And this is incredible. Everybody is so fascinated by this animal. Uh, thank you for bringing him. Thank you for having us. Um, Coco's pretty new to the zoo, so we're excited to have the upstate meet him. Yeah, and, and I understand he's settling in well. He's getting to know the zookeepers, the education staff. Tell us a little bit about his story. Um, so he's only been at the Greenville Zoo for about a couple weeks now. So um, we actually had a reach out about a year ago saying that we were looking for an ambassador armadillo and the Padawami Zoo actually contacted us from South Bend, Indiana. We had a partnership with them already. Our Amar Leopard Anastasia went up to their zoo for the species survival plan we have for them. And we said, well, they have an armadillo. So while they got to have our leopard up there for our species survival plan, helping them increase their species genetic diversity, we're able to have an armadillo come and educate students in the upstate. And it's a fascinating education because he's not from around here. He's different than other armadillos that would be closer, but shows how, I mean, the way he moves and the way he defends himself. So if you've seen armadillos around the Carolina area, you're usually going to be seeing the nine banded armadillos. Now Coco here, he is a three banded armadillo. So there's about 20 different species of them, um, but these guys are one of the two that can roll completely up in a ball. I'll see if he would like to. Right now he's very active and excited, so that's why you'll see sometimes he does a little bit of a lift up. Um, but that shell is his main protection that he has. Um, it's actually called an osteoderm. So my friends at home, if you would like to know what he would feel like, you can actually feel your own fingernail. It's made out of the same keratin that your fingernails are made out of. And just like how we all have unique fingerprints, the type of osteoderm that he has and those patterns are unique to him. And if you're a cougar trying to get at him and your paw goes in the wrong place, he can crunch it yes, down. Yes, he doesn't have a lot of defenses despite um, other than his defensive armor. So uh, jaguars are their main predators in the wild and they'll wait for them to come up really close and they'll actually be sniffing and then they will do that close up motion. And it's kind of like using the ability to pinch a jaguar's nose um, if they get into one of those you know, real armadillo yeah. emergency type situations. Otherwise, they're gonna rely on their defensive measures and their camouflage so they can avoid meeting the jaguars as much as possible. Um, but their main issues that they're facing right now is habitat destruction. So um, while jaguars, of course, are a predator of them, uh, the fragmentation of their habitat is really what's affecting them the most, so. Well, as you've got him around uh, kids and everybody's meeting him, uh, I, they're learning everything about him. Anything else that's just fascinating about the way he moves, eats, lives. Um, so the way that he eats is really interesting. Uh, their closest relatives are actually giant anteaters. So mm -hmm. um, the food that he likes to eat is uh, an insectivore diet. So ants and termites. Luckily for us at the Greenville Zoo, um, we don't have to take care of a lot of ants and termites. We actually have a commercial diet um, that's produced. So this actually is what we feed our anteater. And it's also what we feed our armadillo. So as the same vitamins and minerals that a termite or an ant would have, and we're able to produce it for them. And then he also eats roots and shoots. I will say he has a pretty spoiled life at the yeah, zoo. Yeah, he so seems happy. He you brought him in in a pet carrier and he has a whole pack and play. So he's yes. he's doing well. Um, people want to check him out as an ambassador. The zoo's education program is in place. What, what is his role as ambassador? What, what are the programs involving? So he's supposed to represent his species. So he's able to teach people about his species as a whole. And a lot of times when you get to interact with an animal up close, just as we've seen today here, um, it gives us a better understanding of them. We loved Coco, and another memorable animal encounter on Access Carolina happened when our own Ava Bratz headed to the Foothills Heritage Fair. She got up at close and personal with some of the livestock there, and here's how that went. All right, there's so much to do here. Did I mention a slushy machine, Margaret? It's amazing. Ava, I just have to know the uh, barnyard sounds around you. It sounds like everybody's really excited about your coverage. It's an active scene there. Why, yes, let's what do we just have? travel over here. Come along, Melinda. Who's We've making all that noise? A draft horse, I think uh -huh. they said. Beautiful. <laughs> I know nothing about horses other than that it is beautiful. We'll name her... Gary. Yeah, oh, actually, it's, it's Gary. named Gary. Fantastic. And if we just swing around here, we have <laughs> a beautiful uh, dairy cow. Hello. Oh, that's the oh, loud one, I think. Now. Letting me touch his ear. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, I got a big old lick. So there, it's a lot of love here in Seneca. Ava, you're making friends already like we knew that you would. Have so much fun out there. We look forward to seeing what's up next with you.
And now, in his retirement, our next guest has made it his mission to make senior citizens smile. Doing a really good job at that. We've got Bruce Jordan Russick here with his emotional support rabbit, Boo Boo. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Everyone is just uh, in love with this rabbit already. So first, tell us about Boo Boo. How did Boo Boo come into your life? Well, uh, about, I guess, uh, eight years ago, my fiance Sharon brought him home because I had lost my family all in a short amount of time. And the doctor said, you need an animal. Keep you company. Yeah. I trained him, and uh, now I retired from the government, and I decided to make seniors smile, and we go around and do shows every week. I love this. So you retired from your Homeland Security job. You were a TSA worker at GSP. Yes. And then you end up putting together the Brucey B and Boo Show, and you perform this at assisted living facilities across our area. Uh, what's that like? Tell us about your act, what you do. It's a one-hour show. I do songs from the 60s. I have a gentleman with me, Ted Anderson, who does humor mm -hmm. in between songs, and we make seniors smile, and that's really our main objective. We, we want to bring smiles to all the seniors here in the Carolinas. And they must just melt. I mean, talk to us about the impact. You see it happening right there when, when a senior is interacting with Boo or a meteorologist or whoever you have around here is interacting with Boo and they just, they, what kind of impact is that? Well, you know, uh, it, it brings warmth to my heart to see mm -hmm. what Boo Boo means to these folks. Yeah. It really does. And it makes you want to do the next show and the next show and the next show. And it just makes you want to go on and on and on. Yeah. So it's obviously very rewarding. It's it what you do, and I, and I can tell this is just such a so, something you're so passionate about. I am very much so. Is uh, are you today a different man than you were eight years <laughs> yes, ago? I thanks am. to this rabbit. Thanks to this rabbit, I have been so blessed, and uh, and we want to bless everyone out there that that Boo gets to meet. Well, bless us a little bit. Okay. Well, Boo, Boo comes down on the table. What does? He's Boo a Millerid bunny. He's. Uh, He's, uh, let's see, he's eight years old in July. He was eight years old in July. So, uh, and, and he's pretty comfortable with people. How he did is. you get him to learn how to sit on a shoulder? It's a uh, two hours a day training for three years. <laughs> it took a while. Well worth it, if you ask me. <laughs> and when Boo sits on the shoulder, right when you came in the lobby, mm -hmm. I put Boo on and I thought, I can't tell if Boo's holding on for dear life. But, he, but he's, he's just comfortable. He is very comfortable oh, sitting on folks' shoulders. Uh, you know, tra it's repetition. It's just like training any animal. And, and Boo sees himself on air right now, <laughs> giving mm -hmm. himself the eye, the blue eye, a gorgeous. His beautiful <laughs> Millerid bunny from Sweden. Yeah. And and when when you picked a pet, or I guess your fiance picked a pet. Sharon. Had you thought about a dog? Had you thought about something else? And then she said, rabbit? Well, that, she that's a turning point. came home story. with a bunny, and uh, we oh. went from there. <laughs> that was that. <laughs> so you take this everywhere. You also have... It's not in the shot right now, but when you came up, you, you've got a full-fledged stroller set up. I do. It's, uh, you, you take bunny places. And yeah, we have a song called Boo Boo Song on, on uh, you know, uh, YouTube, and uh, it's talking about how he sits on people's shoulders and rides in his stroller. Yeah, and for his part, does, does Boo know he's entertaining people? Does he uh, know he's part of the show? Yes, he does, believe it What's or not. Role? He looks forward to each performance. We do one show every Friday. We're booked through December, yeah. and uh, we hope to uh, do this as long as we can. Well, stay with us. We've got more amazing animals for you when this special edition of Access Carolina returns.